Welcome to the Peachtree Pre-Installation Checklist Anytime Learning Topic. This topic provides an overview of the procedures and steps used to prepare a computer for a successful installation of Peachtree. After completing this Anytime Learning Topic, you will be able to verify that your computer meets Peachtree's minimum system requirements, verify that you are logged into Windows with full permissions, disable your antivirus program, if any, Enable firewall alerts, if any, and use the ping command to verify system and network functionality. Before preparing for an actual installation, it's very important that you make sure that your computer system meets or exceeds the system requirements listed on the side of Peachtree's box. If you have not purchased the product yet, you can find a list of system requirements with the product's description on Peachtree.com. If your system does not meet Peachtree's listed minimum requirements, your system will most likely have problems running Peachtree in terms of performance and stability, and therefore cannot be supported by Peachtree. There are actually two system configurations listed with Peachtree's system requirements, the minimum requirements and the recommended system configuration. Minimum requirements mean that Peachtree cannot run dependably if it is installed on anything less than the requirements specified. For optimal performance, it's always best to have at least the recommended system configuration. Windows provides a system information utility tool that can be used to determine many of your computer's current system specifications. You can use this tool to compare your system with Peachtree's system requirements. Let's take a look. In any supported version of Windows, you can access the system information utility by clicking the Windows Start button, selecting All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and then selecting System Information. The System Information Utility will appear. On the System Summary page, you can determine if your computer matches many of the system specifications listed in Peachtree System Requirements, including the speed of your CPU, the amount of physical RAM installed, and the installed version of Windows, including currently installed service packs, if any. While on this window, you may want to write down the computer name provided here. It will be used in a later preparation step and if you are setting this system up as part of a Peachtree multi-user network. Other system specifications can be found here as well. For example, we can find information on your hard drive's available space. First, make note of the drive where the system drive is located. This is usually the C drive, and then click Components, Expand Storage, and then click on Drives. Here you will see information for all of the drives installed in your system, including local hard drives, CD or DVD drives, and others. Make sure that the local disk drive you plan to install Peachtree on has at least the minimum free space listed with Peachtree's minimum requirements. Additionally, if the drive that you want to install Peachtree to is not the same as the system drive reported on the system summary window, make sure that the system drive has the same amount of required free space as well. In this situation, Peachtree will need to have the minimum available space on both drives. When you are actually ready to install Peachtree on a system, the very first step you should take to prepare for the installation is to reboot your computer. As simple as it may sound, rebooting a computer before installing a software program goes a long way in helping you avoid installation problems due to unstable programs left in your computer's random access memory. Files in memory that can prolong or interfere with a Peachtree installation include system files locked in memory that Peachtree will need to update during the installation, install shield installation setup files still running after a previous program installation, and so on. Rebooting your computer will clear all of these files from memory, speeding up the installation and minimizing the chance of installation problems. After rebooting, the next step you should take is ensuring that you log into Windows with local administrator rights. This user type is often named Computer Administrator in Windows. You must have unrestricted administrator access when installing Peachtree. This is due to the nature of the installation process and how it needs to update and possibly modify areas of the system that are not accessible to users with restricted Windows rights. 
Here's an easy way to determine whether you have full rights to the system. In Windows XP, select the Start button and then select Run. If you are using Vista or Windows 7, hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and then press the R key. The same Run window will appear. At the Open field, enter Control, Space, User Passwords, and the number 2, no spaces, and then press the OK button. If you have full local administrator rights, a user accounts window will appear. You will most likely see your login ID in the list of user accounts added to the administrator group. The simple fact that your current user profile has access to this window pretty much verifies that you currently have full access rights to this system. If you do not have local admin rights, a password prompt will appear requesting for a local administrator user ID and password. In this case, you will need to log out of Windows and log back in using a different login ID. Once you can access the user accounts window without it asking you for a password, you may continue with the installation of Peachtree. If you are running an antivirus program, you should disable its auto protect feature before walking through the installation. Doing so will ensure that the program does not accidentally quarantine various network enabled files installed with Peachtree. Overall installation time will decrease as well. Most antivirus programs provide an icon in the task tray when it is running. You can right click on this icon and select disable, disable auto protect, or something similar. For example, this system is currently running a vast antivirus. We can right click on a vast taskbar icon to disable the program's auto protect feature. Once Peachtree is finished installing, we can then right click on the icon and enable on access protection. Software firewalls running on your system should be made aware of the files that Peachtree installs and allow them to run unrestricted. Otherwise, Peachtree will not run as designed. Although Peachtree's installation process can automatically configure Windows' built-in firewall, non-Microsoft firewalls such as McAfee, Norton, and Zone Alarm must be configured to display an alert when a Peachtree file runs for the first time on the system. Ensuring that your firewall's alert setting is turned on prior to Peachtree's installation will help you make certain that all relevant Peachtree files are added to the firewall program's safe programs list during the install. As Peachtree is installed, always select Allow on alerts that reference any of the files listed during the installation process. If your firewall program blocks these files, they will be added to your firewall's blocked programs list and Peachtree will not run properly. Common errors that signal that your firewall has blocked Peachtree files include Peachtree cannot be started, please reboot, and the user you entered is already logged into Peachtree. Peachtree's online help provides many guides that can guide you through enabling alerts in your firewall program or removing Peachtree and pervasive files from your firewall's blocked programs list. To access Peachtree's online help, open your web browser and in the address bar, enter www.peachtree.com forward slash support. Peachtree's online help page will display. Click on the Firewall Issues hyperlink. Peachtree's Firewall Help page provides you with everything you need to know to make sure that Peachtree is not restricted by your firewall, including a list of files that your firewall program may block. Additionally, step-by-step -step guides will walk you through enabling alerts and unblocking files for many popular firewall programs. Peachtree uses the Pervasive SQL Database Engine to manage and secure your company's database and uses the TCP IP network protocol to communicate with itself and other Peachtree users on a network. Pervasive will request IP information from Peachtree users on the network using each computer's name. From this name, it will determine the IP address of a computer so that they can send and receive Peachtree data freely. For this to work properly, your Windows workstations must be able to locate each other on the network using the names of each computer in addition to IP addresses. With Windows Ping Utility, 
it's very easy to determine whether or not your workstation computer names are resolving to an IP address properly. Before using Ping, go to each system that Peachtree will be installed on and take note of each computer's name. Remember, you can use the system information utility discussed earlier to locate a computer's name. After locating the computer names, go to the first computer that you will install Peachtree on. This will be the standalone computer if single user or the server if installing in a multi-user Peachtree environment. If the system is using Windows XP, select the Start button and then select Run. Again, if you're using Vista or Windows 7, you can hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and then press the R key. The same Run window will appear. At the open field, enter CMD and then press the OK button. A Microsoft Windows command prompt will appear. First, make sure that TCP IP is installed and working properly on the system currently being accessed. Even if you are installing on a standalone machine, Pervasive will still need to have computer name to IP address resolution working properly. First, we will type ping space 127.0.0.1 and then press enter. IP address 127.0.0.1 is the test loopback address that exists on every computer and can be pinged to make sure that your network adapter is working properly and that TCP IP is configured properly. If the loopback ping is successful, it will return reply messages and various ping statistics and round trip time information. If the ping replies with an error, such as could not find host or display reply timeouts, then either the loopback address was typed in wrong or TCP IP is not configured correctly on this system. Next, let's ping the current computer by name to verify the system is linking the computer name to the system's IP address. For this example, we'll type ping space and then the computer name. Like the loopback address, we should receive reply messages and round trip time information if the ping was successful. If we receive errors or timeouts, we will need to check the name entered for accuracy. Also, turn off your firewall to make sure that it is not interfering with ping activity. If you enter the name correctly and your firewall is not blocking ping requests, you will need to have a network technician resolve the problem before Peachtree will run correctly on this computer. If both the loopback ping and the local name ping were successful, we can assume that TCP IP name resolution is working properly on this system. If this is a standalone Peachtree installation, we can now continue with the installation. If this system is part of a network installation, we now want to ping the other system or systems on the network to make sure that we can communicate with them using computer names. If the current system will host the Peachtree Company database, ping by name each Peachtree workstation that the server computer will be serving. If you receive timeouts or errors, make sure the name was entered correctly and that any firewall programs on the server and the Peachtree workstations are configured properly. On each workstation, ping the loopback address and then ping each workstation by computer name. Then, ping the server computer by name to ensure that the workstation can communicate with the server. And that's it. Following this set of six procedures will help you ensure that your Peachtree installation is a quick and easy process. You have successfully completed this Anytime Learning topic. You have learned how to verify that your computer meets Peachtree's minimum system requirements, verify that you are logged into Windows with full permissions, disable your antivirus program if any, enable firewall program alerts if any, and use the ping command to verify system and network functionality. Thank you for taking this Anytime Learning topic. For information on additional training options available, visit us at sageu.com.